I greet you and I welcome you to this wonderful time in God's presence. I thank God for the privilege I have to bring you the word of God through this forum. By God's grace, I'll be speaking on the topic, the dynamic minister. I want to begin by saying this, that the word dynamic is one seemingly ordinary word. In other words, it's a word that is not new to us. But then I discovered when I was making the research into this topic that I did not know what the word dynamic really means, much as I thought I knew it. So I had to consult my dictionary to find out. From the dictionary, I discovered that the word dynamic is defined from two different perspectives. The first one says, dynamic means vigorous and purposeful. In other words, it means to be full of energy, enthusiasm, and a sense of purpose. Still under vigorous and purposeful, my dictionary says it means ability to get things done, to get things going. The second perspective from which my dictionary defines the word dynamic is that dynamic means active and changing. That is characterized by vigorous activity and producing or undergoing change and development. Much for definitions. I want us to take note that we must sound a note of warning here. When we talk about change, the change we are talking about is progressive change, positive change. That is change within limits. We cannot go awire <laughs> in the name of changing. We must change within limits. Then we must take note that from the Christian perspective, whatever change we engage in, whatever change we embark on, we must take note that the change can be in terms of the method, but never as per the message. In other words, the method can change, but the message remains the same. The story was told of a stammerer who went for a job interview. You know who a stammerer is? A stammerer is one who has challenge with speech. This man came before the panel of interviewers. The job he wanted was to be a salesman for a publishing company. When he got there, they discovered he was a stammerer. They wondered how a stammerer would be a salesman. So they tried to make this man leave, but he told them he could do the job. So as much as they tried, he remained there. So they looked for a way to strategically edge this man out. So they told him along with other people who came for the job interview, they were going to give him some books to go and sell. So they gave him some, they gave others equal numbers of books to go and sell. After some time, this man came back and he was the one who came back earlier than the others. They were amazed. You are back, where are the books? The man said he had sold all the books. How did you do it? He said, oh, very easy. That whenever he got to any prospective buyer, he would knock on their door and tell them, hello, I'm here with books to sell. And uh, the, the first thing he would tell them was, uh, do you want to buy the book or you want me to read a chapter to you? He said <laughs> instantly, they told him, no, 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 no need to read any chapter. Just bring it. That was how the man ended up selling more than the others. And he ended selling faster than the others. Apparently what happened was that whenever he got to anyone and said he was going to read a chapter of the book to them, they told him, don't worry, because they knew how much labor a stammerer would put into reading a whole chapter, and it would take so much time, so they ended up buying his books. So for this man, he simply turned his limitation into rungs on the ladder of life to climb onto his promotion. So you see, the great commission that Jesus gave to us, according to Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus simply told us what to do, go. We are to go the world. What to do in the world? Preach the gospel to every creature. But he did not tell us how. However, the Holy Spirit is sent to teach you all things, as we have recorded in John chapter 14, verse 26. The Bible says there that, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So we are asked, Jesus told us what to do. He told us where to go. He told us what to do. He did not tell us how to do it. But he told us that the Holy Spirit will come and teach us all things. So this is what brings in the place of creativity. Whereas we are called to preach the gospel, 
How do we preach it? This is what calls for creativity. And creativity here means imaginative ability. The ability to use the imagination to develop new and original ideas or things. God once said to me, and I can never forget this. He said, if you do things the usual way, the best you can get are the usual results. This calls for dynamism. It calls for one to move in a dynamic way. For instance, we need creativity in preaching the gospel. You know, the gospel can be preached in the, in the pulpit, where we bring the word of God. It can be preached through tracts, through books, songs, electronic media, internet, drama, movies, and so many other ways. But in any way you want to preach the gospel, you must learn to do it with creativity. This brings us to the aspect of creativity in the Bible. I just want to talk about a few creative ideas that worked for people in the Bible. The first one is the incidence of the four friends of the man who had palsy. The man with palsy in the Bible, I'm sure you remember that account in Mark chapter 2 from verse 3 to 12. The friends of this man came to the house where Jesus was ministering. They looked around and saw the whole place was jam-packed. They went to the door. There was no way in because people filled the whole house, even to the door. These people came up with a creative idea. The Bible says they climbed up to the top of the house, to the roof. They tore the roof and let down their friends through the aid of roofs on the stretcher, down right before Jesus. Jesus had to stop everything he was doing at that moment. He was amazed at the level of creativity of these people. He was amazed at their level of faith. He had to suspend every other thing to attend to the man. He prayed for the man. You know the end of the story. The man went back home carrying the stretcher that had been carrying him for years. It was creativity that worked here. The woman with the issue of blood, whereas other people were thronging Jesus, walking after him, this woman thought of a creative idea that I do not need a whole lot of Jesus' body. All I need is just the hem of his garment. She went for the hem of the garment and she got a miracle. It was a creative way for this woman to obtain what she needed from Jesus. You remember the account of Zacchaeus who wanted to see Jesus. He was dynamic in his thinking. What did he do? He climbed up a sycamore tree. It was not even him that called Jesus. It was Jesus that noticed them. Because he took a step, he thought ahead, he thought out of the box of how to get what he wanted. And you know the end of the story. Jesus had to abide in his house that night and he got his miracle of salvation. You remember the blind man, blind Bartimaeus? Whereas other blind people in the land that day were merely hearing Jesus passing. This man went a step further. He shouted, Jesus of Nazareth, thou Jesus, O Lord. He said all manner of things, shouting at the top of his voice, just to get the attention of Jesus. He got his miracle that day. And when God was going to call the attention of Moses, you remember quite well that it was through the burning bush, where the bush was born and yet was not consumed. All these are creative ways of one moving ahead in life. If you are not creative, you remain stagnant. You become a bore. And Jesus does not intend this for us. He wants us to come up new every day, as the word of God says. They are new every day. The story was told of Michelangelo, this great artist. He was contracted to make a drawing in the Sistine Chapel in Rome. When this man got to the chapel, he looked around and he thought of what he was going to do that would leave a lasting impact. He thought where was the best for him to paint. He looked around. You know what this man did? He went ahead to do the painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It was a 5,200 square feet large painting. And the thing took him so many years. As a matter of fact, from 1508 to 1512, he was still on this painting. Uh, you would be amazed to hear today that the painting is still there on the ceiling of Sistine Wall. If he had chosen to do the painting on the wall, the need for a painting might have caused them to clean up his painting. If he had done it on the floor, which was the cheapest way out, the easiest way out, people stepping on it would have cleaned it up. But he chose the difficult way. But the difficult way turned out to be a lasting way. The painting is still there today. He went the creative way. Child of God, we must learn to be dynamic. 
We can't afford to do things just the way it had always been done. We must seek the righteous way to go along the path of changes so that our gospel, which the Lord has committed into our hands, will come forth fresh and new every day. Can you imagine a world without the following creative inventors and several others? Joan Kutenberg, who invented the printing press in 1450. Benjamin Tilgman, the inventor of paper in 1866. Can you imagine a world without Alexander Bell, the inventor of the telephone in 1876? Will M. Conrad, the inventor of X-ray in 1895? Can you imagine if Wright brothers had decided to go the ways other people went in their days and did not invent the airplane in 1903? How easy air travel should be today? You and I know the answer. It would be very, very difficult. Peter Goldmark was the man who invented the color television in 1950. That means if this man had not done that, we would still be seeing the world around in black and white. Just imagine, if people are still not inventing things today, we just remain stagnant without any kind of dynamism, they will still will not have the internet and see what God is using the internet to do, even in the area of spreading the gospel today. Child of God, we must learn to be dynamic. God wants it. We want to consider now the benefits of creativity. Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings and not before mean men. In other words, to be diligent according to the Bible from the RSV means to be skillful. From the Bible in basic English, it means to be expert. So God wants us to be skillful in what we do. And there are so many benefits to creativity. I will just summarize these benefits under three. Number one, creativity helps you to stand in for Christ. Number two, it helps you to stand out for Christ. Number three, it helps you to stand up for Christ. You know the Bible says, occupy till I come. So how do you occupy? You occupy by standing in for Christ. And for you to stand in, you must be dynamic. For you to stand up for Christ, you must be dynamic. For you to stand out from the crowd, you must be dynamic. In short, for you not to be lost in the crowd, you must be dynamic. And we have enemies of dynamism, enemies of creativity. Number one is inferiority complex. Something is uh, recorded in Jeremiah chapter 1. I will take my time to read the scripture from verse 4 to verse 8. In verse 4, the Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ha, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Let's pause at this moment. God here spoke to Jeremiah. He gave him a profile of his life, that even before you were born, I took my time to form you in the belly. I knew you even before you were born. Before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nation. And the Lord paused, waiting for Jeremiah to say, Thank you, Lord. What would you have me do? But what came out of the mouth of Jeremiah was, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. This is the spirit of inferiority. After God had told him how much he packaged into him, what came out of his mouth was, I am a child. I cannot speak. I am a child. I cannot speak. But thank God the Lord responded in verse 7. But the Lord said unto him, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, seeth the Lord. What troubled Jeremiah was a spirit of inferiority. And this is the bane of a lot of ministers today. We are frightened that can we really do this work? Are we loaded enough? Do we have the capacity? Am I well spoken enough? Uh, am I coordinated enough? You don't need this. The Lord has ordained you. He has sanctified you and he has sent you as a prophet to the nations. Your work is to go there and declare whatever he puts in your mouth. I remember the story of a molecular biology lecturer in, a, in an American university. This man had 30 students. He was a professor. So when the time was ending, 
the man came to the students and he said, I have been privileged to be your instructor throughout this term. I am very glad at your input in attending classes. And he said all manner of things about them. He said he was sure they were committed to the academics. This man went on to say, as we prepare to write our exams, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you uh, two alternatives. Number one, you can choose to skip the examination. When you do this, I'm going to give you a B, an automatic B. But if you choose to write the examination, whatever you score will be your mark. Can you believe that most of the students in that class opted to skip the examination? And the man kept to his word. He gave them Bs. On the day of the examination, he gave the question papers to the students. And as they turned the question papers to start the examination, the few in the examination hall were amazed to see what the man wrote on the paper. He said, and I quote him, Congratulations, you have just received an A. Keep believing in yourself. Can you imagine that? So the ones who decided to write the examination knew that they were capable. They didn't feel any inferiority. They believed they could do it. So without even writing an examination in the end, they got their A's. So this is a challenge to us, child of God. We should learn not to feel inferior as we do this work. If you really want to be dynamic, believe. According to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The other enemy of creativity is copycatism. Sorry, copycatism is my coinage. In other words, when you are a copycat, that's to say you are a slavish imitator, you cannot really be dynamic. John Mason said something, you are the most qualified person on the face of the earth to do what you are destined to do. So what are you, child of God? Are you a trailblazer or a tail chaser? You should learn to be an inventor. You should learn to be an originator. You should not die a copycat. Don't stretch your neck looking for what is the next thing they are doing out there. Look for what the Holy Spirit is asking you to do. Another enemy of creativity is laziness. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 25 says, The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to work. Romans 12 11 says, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The Lord wants us to choose the path of hard work. He doesn't want us to go through the path of laziness. When you choose a path of laziness, then you cannot go far in doing whatever you are doing for God. Something happened some years back in Nigeria. The great filmmaker, Herbert Ogunde, who is now late, was going to make a movie. This man had a scene in the movie where he wanted a rainstorm to pull down a massive tree, an Iroko tree in Nigeria. And as the tree fell, he wanted it to fall upon some ritualists who were gathered under the tree. This man brought some black crew members and he told them what he wanted. You know what they said to him? They said, sir, this is impossible. To make a tree fall and kill people? Impossible, sir. The man went ahead to invite some white crew members. He told them the same thing. They said to him, very simple. What the first set of people said was impossible. And the other set of people said, very simple. What made the difference? The difference was mental laziness. This is not to imply by any means that the black man is lazy. No, I'm only making a point. You see, there are a lot of black men all around the world, black women all over the world, who are making their mark in all fields of life. But the issue is that the four set of crew members said it was impossible because they were mentally lazy. You should not be lazy. You should be an active thinker. And how can you be an active thinker? You must submit your mental faculty to the Holy Spirit. When it comes upon your mental faculty, you discover that you move ahead in active dynamism. This is the way. I pray the Lord will help us. Another enemy of creativity, another enemy of dynamism is fear. Fear of mistakes, fear of criticisms, fear of failure, fear of all manner of things. And above all, fear of the unknown. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but is given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So we should not fear anything. Fear no man. Fear God. You go ahead. Whenever God sends you on an errand, 
Just go ahead, believing in him that he will see you through. So child of God, do not be afraid even of mistakes. From your mistakes, the Lord can bring about a great turnaround in our generation. Then we have premature satisfaction, another enemy of creativity. Do you know that yesterday's success is not a mattress to sleep on, but a springboard to launch into greater heights? We should try to avoid premature satisfaction. A lot of us, when we achieve some success, then we rest there. We don't want to move ahead. For you to be dynamic, you should not rest there. You think of the next step. You think of the next step. You think of the next step. What next do I do? What do you want me to do again? You see, a lot of journalists, when they come to interview me for some of their journals, for some of their newspapers and magazines, they often ask me this question. They say, which is your best movie so far? I don't take time to answer the question. The answer I give is this, that our best movie is yet to be produced. The reason being that I'm always thinking ahead by the grace of God, believing that the best is yet to come. So you should not be satisfied prematurely if you really want to move ahead. Let's go a step further as we consider how to get wisdom for creative ideas. Number one, you must ask for it with the right motive. We'll be looking at Solomon as a case study here in 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 5 to verse 15. Solomon did something. He asked for wisdom from the Lord. But he did not merely ask. He told God exactly why he wanted it. He said, Lord, I need this wisdom. I'm paraphrasing that scripture. So that I'll be able to bear rule over your great people. So that I will know how to administer judgment amongst your great people. So that I will know how to lead these, your great people. Take note of something. He kept referring to the people as God's people. So he did not want the wisdom for himself. He did not want it for personal aggrandizement. He wanted it for God's purpose again. Read through the scripture somewhere there. The Lord said what Solomon did, what he asked, what he said, pleased the Lord. The Lord went ahead to give him the wisdom he desired. Why? His motive was right. You know what you want in life, but God wants to know why you want it. This is where motive comes in. You see, never do you seek anything from God to impress people. You want to be dynamic. You want to be creative. When God sees that your motive is wrong, that is to impress people out there, to let people know that you are the best, you seek to do it so that you can win an award as the best preacher, the best producer, the best writer, the best scripter, the best singer. When God sees this, he withdraws the grace. So you must have a right motive. This is the first and a very, very important step. Number two way to receive wisdom for creative ideas. You must study and research. Paul admonished in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You must study and you must research. You must be studious. You must learn to read good materials. Watch edifying materials. Study godly role models. Ask relevant questions. This is the way to do it. This is how to go about it. By God's grace, I enjoy reading a lot. Whenever I find something striking, I take note of it. Even in my field as a drama minister, I go through every material to see what can improve me in what I am doing for God. So you should be studious and you should know how to research if you really want to be a dynamic minister. Number three, you must dream dreams. If what you are dreaming about is not bigger than you, then that dream is too small. You should learn to dream big dreams. You know the story of Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 from verse 5 to verse 11. There the Bible told us that he had a dream that he saw so many sheaves gathered around his own sheaf and 11 sheaves bowed before his own. His brothers were envious they got annoyed at what he said. <laughs> the Bible says, Joseph dreamed another dream. In other words, even if people look down on your dream, that should not stop you from dreaming. The best you could do is to dream another dream. So in the end, he dreamed another dream. This time he did not see himself alone. He saw himself as a tiny star with 11 stars with the sun and the moon gathered around him, the little star, all of them bowing. You know the end of the story that Joseph ended up becoming what he had dreamed about. 
So you should learn to be a big dreamer if you really want to be dynamic in your work for God. I remember the story of a man known as Monty. Monty was a student in an American high school. <laughs> One day, his teacher told him along with other members of his class, he said, write a composition on your dream. Monty wrote his own composition and submitted it to the teacher. The teacher gave him an F. He said, your dream is too big. It cannot be accomplished. You cannot actualize this. This is unrealistic. What did this young man write in the script? He merely wrote that he had a dream of owning 7,000 square feet uh, resort center built on 2,000 acres of land. That here people will come visiting, have leisure, enjoy themselves. That was what he submitted to the teacher. The teacher gave him an F and told him, go back and write something that is more realistic. As Monty sat down with his pen, placed on his paper to rewrite something, you know what came to him? The thought came to him and it spoke in his ears. Monty, do not abandon your dream. And instantly Monty went ahead. He wrote on the script, Sir, keep your grades. I will keep my dream. Hallelujah. In the end, so many years after, this same teacher had another set of students and he was going to take them to a resort center across the country. He looked for one big resort center. He said the purpose was to let them see the need to dream big. When they got there, he showed them round. In the end, they took him to the office of the CEO, the owner of the resort center. And the teacher came face to face with Monty. Monty had lived to build what his dream was all along. So for you to be a dynamic minister, beloved, you must learn to dream dreams, big dreams for that matter. Another way to get wisdom for creative ideas is that you must be a risk taker. You must be a risk taker. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. In the end, Esther did not perish. If you really want to be a dynamic man of God, a dynamic servant of the Most High God, you must be ready to take risks. If you refuse to take risks, then you remain stagnant. And the fifth way to get wisdom for creative ideas is this. You must realize three things. Number one, you are too original to be a photocopy. God created you in his image and his likeness. You don't have to be a photocopy of somebody else. Number two thing to realize is that you are too loaded to be useless. You are too loaded to be useless. I remember this childhood story told about a camel. You called a camel, mama camel, that had a baby, baby camel. One day in the zoo where they were placed, baby camel came to mama camel and said, Mama, why do we have long eyelashes? Mama said so that when we move in the desert and wind blows sand in the desert, that the sand will not get into our eyes. That's why we have long eyelashes. Good, mama. Why do we have these long legs? Mama camel said that. So that when there is heat on the desert, the heat will not be able to reach our body since our long legs will lift our body above the sand. Good mama, why do we have these big arms on our back? Mama said, so that when we travel in the desert and we don't have water to drink for a long distance, we will refresh in our bodies through the water stored in the hump. Good mama, why do we have these big hoofs on our legs? Mama said, so that when we walk on desert sand, that our legs might not sink into the sand. Mama said, baby, you have asked so many questions. I think you have had enough. Why are you asking all these questions? And the baby said, Mama, if we are so endowed with all of these attributes to survive and live in the desert, what are we doing in the zoo? And that's the question. You are loaded, really loaded to be dynamic for God. You cannot afford to waste all of these values, all of these attributes, all of these impulse that the Lord has put inside of you by being stagnant. You must move ahead. You must be a creative inventor to the glory of God. And number three, under this, you are too anointed to be anonymous. Note, when God breathed inside of you, the breath he breathed in you was a breath of life. What it did was to transfer his nature, including his creativity into you. Every man has it. Every man has it. We have the talent. We are loaded with gifts. 
the Lord bestowed so much favor upon us. We are created to be created. The problem is not knowing how to activate what the Lord has put in us. <laughs> I remember the story at this point of a man who bought a table lamp. The man brought the table lamp home only to discover that there was no switch on the body of the table lamp. He looked and looked, there was no switch to switch it on. But because the thing was so beautiful, he just placed it on the shelf in a certain room as an artifact, just as an object of decoration. After some months, a friend came visiting this man. And the friend saw this table lamp there placed on the shelf. Wow, friend, you have this wonderful table lamp. The man said, yes, it is wonderful, but it is non-functional. He said, why do you say it is non-functional? He said, since he had bought it, he could not put it on because there was no switch on it. The friend laughed. He said, what do you mean? Come and plug it. This man plugged the table lamp. This friend who came visiting went there. He tapped it on the head. The thing came on. He tapped it a second time. The thing went off. And this man said, wow. So this is how to make it work. I never knew. He never knew because he did not find out. This is the way it is with a lot of us. We are loaded with creative ideas. The problem is we just decide not to find out. If you look inwards with the aid of the eyes of the Holy Spirit, you discover what you are loaded with. And as you discover the creative input in you, I pray your life will not remain the same. I would like to throw these challenges at you as we begin to round off this short discourse. Number one, learn to do new things. Number two, if you cannot do new things, then do old things in new ways. Number three, if you cannot do old things in new ways, then do old things in old ways, but new insights. By all means, just make sure you introduce newness into what God has sent you to do. But I must again sound a note of warning. As we seek this change, as we seek to be dynamic, we must remember righteousness. I learned that many scenes on board in the movie, some scenes on water, were actually filmed in a studio, not on actual locations. Many images, including crowds of people that are seen in the movie, were actually computer generated. And I even got to know that the major interior of the ship, the grand staircase, the dining hall, the salon, a lot of places, as we saw in the ship in the movie, were actually built over a 19 million liter tank of water. And this was what was lowered gradually into the water with the aid of hydraulic system, which simulated the sinking of the ship. So they didn't go to any ocean to do this. They did it in a studio. And when you watch the movie, you'll be amazed at the reality of what they came up with. This is creativity. This is dynamism produced by people whom I guess were not believers. So if, let us assume they were unbelievers, could come up with something as creative, how much more those of us who have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of us. This is a call to us to be dynamic as we preach the gospel of Christ. Believing again, as recorded in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I love the way the Amplified Version puts the same scripture. It says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. This is the bottom line. We are sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. So as from today, we move away from stagnancy into dynamism, to the glory of God. The gospel of Jesus will be spread across the world. But let me tell you this, and this is the most important. As you are creative to lead your life as a minister of God, you must be creative to lead your life as a Christian too, so that ultimately the heaven with so much desire will be our portion. As I close, I would want you to repeat this after me. Please, can you say, My Father says I can do all things. Therefore, I believe I can do all things. The child of a lion is a lion. The child of a tiger is a tiger. 
I am a child of God, the creator. Therefore, I am a creator myself. As from today, I move from being rejected to being accepted. I move from the common to the uncommon. I move from the ordinary to the extraordinary. From today, I will operate on a higher realm of originality. I will operate on a higher realm of ingenuity. I will operate on a higher realm of creativity. I will operate on a higher realm of dynamism. I cannot be limited. I cannot be restricted. I cannot be obstructed. I cannot be stopped. I am whom God says I am. A dynamic child of God. A dynamic minister. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Finally, this is my prayer for you and for myself. The heaven we so much desire will be our portion in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. See you some other time. God bless you.